Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, let's focus on null functions in SQL. We have seen about null values elaborately in chapter 2 of this playlist. In this presentation, what we are going to focus is null functions. At first, we need to understand why do we need null functions in SQL. Before understanding what is null functions, I would like to reiterate few things about null values. because these null functions are going to be operated on null values. We know null is a special value in DBMS. When we talk about database management system, due to the advancements of databases over the years, databases are enriched to store any type of data, not just numbers or text or decimals. Even we have multimedia databases that can store multimedia data as well. One different type of value it is going to store is a null value. The null value is a special value in database management system. Why we are referring it as a special value is that because this null represents the value of the attributes that are unknown or not applicable or missing for that particular row. In databases, when we have a situation that the value is not known or if it is not applicable or if it is missing, in those situations, null values are really helpful. If you want more information about null values, I would request you to navigate to chapter 2 of this playlist and kindly visit null values lecture once to gain better understanding about null values. So obviously, null is neither blank nor zero. This is a special value. It is neither blank nor zero. And that is why we refer this value as a special value. The topic of this presentation is null functions. And these null functions actually operates on null values. And that's why this point reveals the fact that null functions are used to perform operations on null values that are stored in the database tables. So from this, it's clear that we have an exclusive function that can operate on null values that are stored in the databases. And these functions are referred as null functions. We are done with the basics of null functions. Let's now see what are the various null functions in SQL. In this presentation, I am going to explain about four null functions. The first function is isNull. The second one is coalesce. The third function is nullIf. And the last function is ifNull. At first, let's start with isNull, the null function. When we are talking about is null null function, the idea is so simple. The name itself says that is null, meaning is it null? And the answer is going to be either yes or no. In language perspective, the option is going to be a Boolean value. It returns true if it is a null. It returns false if it is not null. The working of is null is straightforward. Let's see an example. For that, let's take a table, which is the employee table here, where we have attributes such as ID, first name, last name, department and salary. For some reasons, there are null values for some records in the database or in the table. Now let's see how this null function is going to operate on this table. Let's see example number one, which is select one of the attribute or the column in the database in the table. And the second column or attribute I want to retrieve is not the direct attribute as mentioned in the table. Whereas this is isNull function and I am providing an argument to this isNull function which is this salary attribute as null underscore well from employee. So we have an employee table and we are going to retrieve salary from this table. Also we are going to have another column which is going to contain the output of isNull function for the salary value and the name of the new column that we are retrieving is null underscore well. Let's see the output now. So the output is going to contain two columns, salary and null val. So the output is going to contain salary and null underscore val. As I mentioned, this is null is going to return boolean value. Zero means if it is not null, one means if it is null. If you observe, for this 50,000, which is actually the salary, is 50,000 a null value? No, this is not a null value and that is why is null is returning zero here. Talking about this, no null value. This is also not a null value. This is also not a null value. Wherever we have null value in the salary column of the table, there 
the value returned is 1 because this is a null value. I hope example number 1 is clear for you. Example number 1 is all about is null function. Let's move on to example number 2 with a small variation in the usage of is null function. Let's see that now. In example number 2, obviously we are going to use the same table and the query is select sum is null salary comma 10,000 as sal sum from employee. What we are retrieving is this is an aggregate function as you all know. We are going to sum salary if it is null it's going to use 10,000 as the value so that the sum of all values in the salary column is added and the result is displayed as sal sum. See the output is going to be this one which is the summation of all the salary values. As I already mentioned, null is neither zero nor blank. And that is why if we directly sum this, we might not get the expected result because this cannot be treated as zero because null is a special value. But what we have instructed here is if there is a null value in the salary, replace it with 10,000 so that the summation can be easily performed. Here is a question for you. We know null is neither blank nor zero. But the question is, we want to consider null to be zero. In example 2, we consider 10,000 for the replacement of null in order to do the summation. How to do that? It's simple. Just pause this video for a while and think about it. I hope you are done. As I mentioned, it's simple. Instead of 10,000, just replace it with zero. So that your summation considers null as a zero. We are done with the is null function. Let's now move on to the next null function, which is coalis. In English, coalis means to come together to form one larger group. However, in DBMS, coalis means it's going to return the first occurred non-null expression. I mean, this function can take multiple expressions, let's say expression 1, comma, expression 2, comma, expression 3 and so on. What this function is going to do is that it's going to return the first occurred non-null expression among the set of arguments we have passed. Let's see an example for which I'm going to take the same employee table and the example number three is select id, comma salary. These are the attributes of the table id and salary and apart from these two columns, I'm going to create one more column in the output which is coalis salary, comma id. Two parameters I'm going to pass here. And the output of this koal is salary, id is stored as a separate column as result where we are retrieving all these things from employee table, which is this. Now the output is going to be this one. Now let me explain you how did I get this output. As expected, id is the first column, salary is the second column and koalis function is called and the result or the output of koalis function or the return value of this coalis function is stored as the third column as result. Now, as I mentioned, this coalis is going to take multiple expressions. Now, in this case, I am using two expressions. Now, this is going to return the first occurred non-null value. In this case, 50,000, 101. Let's take this, 50,000, 101. Since both are not null values, the first occurred not null value is salary and that is why it is returning salary as such. Now let's take the second row. For this row, the input is 40,102, which is this. So the first occurred non-null value is 40,000. Salary is the first attribute. So it always returns salary as the output if salary is not null. If salary is null, then the first occurred non-null value will be id. So it returns this value as the result. And that is why whenever there is a null value in salary, we are getting id as the value. Let's assume one more scenario. What if both are null? In that case, it returns null as the output. I mean to say, coalis is going to return the first occurred non-null value in the set of expressions that we are passing as an argument. If all the arguments are null, then it will return null value. In this case, at least one of the arguments is a non-null value and that is why we are not getting null value as the output. We are done with the second null function, the coalis. Now let's move on to the third null function, which is null if, for which I'm going to take the same table employee. Let's see an example now. Example number four, select id, first name, 
null if id comma new id as result from employee here i have done a small modification for understanding null if the fourth column i have made it as a new id let's assume for some reasons the company has given an id to each employee and they have revised the id as a new id and employees are holding some new id values here now let's see how null if is going to operate when we talk about null if it's going to compare these two expressions if both the expressions are the same i mean if both the expressions are matching it returns null that's what this says null if id is equal to nid it means null if both the expressions are same so if this id and new id are same it returns null else what it returns it returns the first expression which is id so the output is going to contain three columns id first name which is id first name and the third one is result now this result is the output of null if by passing two parameters id and new id as mentioned the output of null if is going to be the first expression if both the expressions are not matching i mean they are not equal if they are equal then it returns null as the output let's see the output now for the first row id 101 and the new id 201 these two are not matching i mean they are different so it returns the first value which is id which is 101 in this case let's take the second row which is 102 and here also 102 since both are matching it returns null similarly third row 103 103 since both are matching it returns null so the idea behind this is it compares both the expressions if both the expressions are the same it returns null if they are different then the value of the first expression is returned as the result now when we talk about this null if this null if can also be used along with select where and group by clauses in case we want the output as 201 here i mean we want the output of new id not the old id what should we do just swap the parameters new id comma id it will meet our requirements simply speaking null if meaning null if both the arguments are matching we are done with the third null function which is null if let's move on to the last null function which is if null remember the names are different null if and if null are different now let's see how if null operates example for which i am taking the employee table which we use for example 1 2 and 3 which contains id first name last name department and salary let's see the example example number 5 select id salary if null salary comma 999 as result from employee let's see the output the output is this obviously three columns id salary and the output of if null which is stored as result that is why we are getting the third column as result now let's analyze how this if null is going to operate if null is going to replace the null value with a specific value if there is a null value in salary it's going to be replaced with 999 say for example in the salary for the first row it is 50000 so the result is returned as 50000 for easier navigation let me refer to the salary column here however both are same because the data for this is actually coming from here with the modification only in the third column because this is the output for if null so 50000 is not a null value so it is returned as such wherever we have a null value it is returned as 999 because that is what i have mentioned here so if null is going to replace the null value with a specific value whatever we have mentioned in the second argument If the first argument is null then it replaces it with this value if the first argument is not null then the first argument itself is returned as the return value i hope all the null functions are clear to you before signing out please take a disclaimer from me before implementing all these null functions in the database or before trying all these null functions in the database i would request you to check the documentation to know whether that null function is supported by that particular software or not i hope the session is informative and thank you for watching